everybody welcome back to my channel we have reached the end and by the end i don't mean anything ominous it's just the end of this notebook this is the notebook that i've been using for my journal since the start of january and i did uh, mention it before in a previous video so i thought that since i finally made to the end of this journal in what four and a half months just over four and a half months i thought i would come on youtube and discuss what I thought about this journal, what journal I'm going to be moving into, and also go through a list of all the notebooks in my stash that I have yet to go through and likely will prob and likely will use for my journal. It's a great way to kind of for me to s remind myself of how many notebooks I have because I end up having a lot of notebooks and also to share with you my thoughts on the paper and just talk stationary. I did see this kind of video from two other people on YouTube this in this year alone. There's probably many more, but the two I've seen this year was one from Sarah Martinez, who did one of these videos, and also Girl and Quilling. I will link those videos for you to watch if you want to see more about notebooks. So I'm going to start with what I use these notebooks for. This one is my journal. It's a long form journal. And this is my morning pages journal. So my long form journal is where I write in long form in paragraphs. And I just come in here to ramble and rant and talk about things positive, negative, whatever I want. Um, I tend to use fountain pens in here. Sometimes I will add a bit of paint as in like a watercolor background. And sometimes I go through phases where I don't do that at all. Lately I've been... Um, using stamps and I recently tried using washi tape. So the Morning Pages journal is based on the concept by the artist Julia Cameron and she wrote a book called The Artist Way which talks about the Morning Pages journal. So for me the way I use the morning journal is every day I sit down here and write and it's more of a stream of consciousness type journaling. Julia Cameron in her book mentions using three pages per day of this kind of stream of consciousness consciousness writing but uh, i found that my best writing comes from two pages all right so now we've gone into the two purposes of this journal i'm going to talk about the notebooks themselves and the paper what i thought of them this one is the nanami paper cafe note in the b6 slim size and i hit a bookmark here because that last page is always sticking up because of the way that it's bound. And I don't want you to see the writing here. But this was my journal. I'll show you the beginning cover page. I, I, I used it from January till now. I said in my previous video that when I was introducing this that I struggled with the size, which is the B6 slim size, and the line spacing of this journal, which is 3.7 millimeters. And I did manage to get all the way through it, all 384 pages of Tomori River paper, mainly because I love the paper. I have adjusted to this size, so I wouldn't say no to getting another journal one day in this B6 slim size. But I really right now want to move back to a bigger size. This is kind of the size that I'm accustomed to, and it's an A5. I will not probably be using this particular notebook, the Anatomy Cafe Note, ever again because of the line spacing. At 3.7 millimeters, I think it's way too small. And I'm someone who has big handwriting. I need bigger grid spacing for me to use as a guide. And I also tend to use thicker, um, like medium fountain pen nibs or higher. And it kind of takes up too much space when I'm writing in this kind of small line spacing. So while I love the paper, I didn't, and I'm okay with the size, I did not like the line spacing. and. But this little bookmark, bookmark here, it's a magnetic bookmark, I just thought I'd show you. And again, I had to clip the pages because this is the first page and it's glued down. But I uh, just thought I'd show you this. This is a cute little magnetic bookmark. It doesn't hold a lot of pages, but it's very strong. And it's from the company Bidu and Co. Next, we have my morning pages journal. This is a Loistrum 1917. And it's in a kind of indigo color or purple color. And I used fountain pens in here too. 
it was my first time using a Leuchtturm. I used this from January to April 30th, and I really liked the paper, even for fountain pens. You, you could say that it does ghost, so when you flip over to the next page, you'll see the writing that uh, you made on the other side. This Tomoe River paper does the same thing, so it doesn't really bother me. The only issue I had with this in fountain pens was bleed through a little bit of the time. And I'll tell you, because every single day I write in here, I will write down the day of the year at the top. And on day 50, that's the first day out of what, 100 and some 20 something days in this notebook, day 50 was the first day that I got bleed through. So I actually really enjoyed this paper. It's kind of a cream colored paper and it's a five millimeter dot grid. The, ba the back is perforated here, so these unused pages, I, I will be tearing them out and using them elsewhere. But I, I was pleasantly surprised by this notebook, and I would purchase it again. And I actually do have some more, which I will get to soon. And I will probably use this as my morning pages journal someday in the future. And I wouldn't mind using this in my long form journal as well, actually. These are the first two completed notebooks of 2020. So let's discuss the next two that I'm going to use to replace these two. This is the Nanami Paper 7 Seas Cross Field Journal. It's in the A5 size. It's got Tomoe River paper and it's got a whopping 480 pages. So this thing is huge. The grid is a, what they call a cross field, a cross grid, because it looks kind of spaced like a dot grid, but instead of dots, they have these very tiny little crosses. And uh, it, for me, it just functions pretty much the same as a dot grid, which is what I like the most anyway. So I'm really excited to be working in here in this bigger size, bigger line spacing. My line spacing is either Four millimeters is the smallest I can go, and six is about the highest. I'm really excited. I did kind of try to film my setup from the beginning. And I can show you the beginning because there's absolutely nothing personal in here except for maybe the date. So I have to hear the journal. You'll see me you will see me kind of just setting that up with a stencil. And then I have an index. I have probably a couple of pages of index, and then I'm gonna start. Writing. I will likely number the pages as well because I f find that I like seeing the page numbers as I get through this journal. And I know that this journal will be, I know that this journal will hold up well because I've used this for several months. I've used the smaller A6 for five months. So I know that the Nanami paper's kind of binding quality is pretty good. For my morning pages journal, my next journal is something I've already started because um, I had to start in May and it is it is a moleskin notebook but it's a moleskin with a twist and I'll explain what I mean by a twist in a second but this is a moleskin size now the moleskin is narrower than in A5 I can compare this to so there's a kind of bit of running room here, uh, but it's about the same height. And I find that even though it's smaller, I'm okay with it. I think anything narrow, narrower than this is probably too small. Now this cover is like a limited edition cover and I kind of got sucked into buying this Moleskine because um, it's the James Bond 007 kind of limited edition cover and it was on sale, which is kind of a big trigger for me, sales. It's got this kind of satin cover to it, and I like the feeling. But what I mean by the moleskin with a twist is, oh, oh, you can see the beautiful end papers here, which is part of the main reason why I like moleskins, because they have such sort of nice designs. And I really should be focusing more on the paper than I am on the outside. And so what I mean by a twist is it does not use the moleskin paper anymore. I have cut out all the pages from the original notebook, which was a lined notebook, and I have put in my own paper. And here you can see I had to cut some paper, but I didn't do a very good job. 
it's a bit ragged here. But here, the paper is different. And it is a square grid, five millimeter, and it's white with very dark blue lines. It originally was a Claire Fontaine notebook. I cut it out of that cover and stuck it in here. And I took the trouble to rounding all of these corners to match. So it was a lot of work and I wanted to see mainly whether I could do it more than um, whether or not I would like it. And I do like it. I really like the Claire Fontaine paper. It's really nice and smooth, very fountain pen friendly. Uh, my only issue perhaps is with this notebook that it doesn't lay flat at the beginning. So I really do, every time I turn a new page, I have to kind of flatten it. Or I could kind of train it to lay flat, but it does take some work. And next we get to a whole stack of notebooks. This thing fills up the entire screen, but it is a box. It's just a cardboard box I got from Sears, I believe, when it was on sale. It's not pink is not really my favorite thing and florals either, but again, it was on sale and it looks nice. So here's my stash. Ooh. I'm going to take this box off here and then just kind of unload the books and then go through all of them. All right, you see this shadow here on the side? That's all my notebooks. I'll just go in random order. Now, these are notebooks I got from the brand Apica. It's hard to find out what the brand name is, but it is Apica, and it says Official Notebook. So originally, I think this is more for uh, students to use to write notes with, and it's in a huge, rather big B5 size. What I have done with these in the past is I have cut them down to A5 size and B6 size to use for my traveler's notebooks. Last year, I also used one of these as my morning pages journal. It's got 40 sheets, but it really means 80 pages. And if I do three pages a day for my morning pages, then it takes me about two something months to get through the entire notebook. So this lasts quite a while. It has a six millimeter ruling and it's lined. So you can see at the top, it's got... Um, a lot of space for the page number and the date and the place for the subject. So this is too big for me. I usually cut it down to A5 star size when I use it. I have also hole punched some of these pages and stuck them in my A5 binder. So I like these. And they were really cheap too because here I have two. But I originally started off with a pack of five and they were five dollars. So this was one dollar each. This is really nice. It's fountain pen friendly. The paper is very, very smooth, so I'm happy to use this. Now, my only issue with this when I was using this last year was sometimes if you kind of get oils from your hands on the paper, then the ink will start to feather. I found that out when I was writing because I'd start off writing and the paper would be fine with the fountain pen ink, but by the end time I got to the bottom, it would be showing feathering. So what I have to do is I have to take another piece of paper and use it to kind of protect my hand from this paper. And it's not a big deal. Next, I have another notebook. This one is my newest acquisition. It's A5 size again. And this is the Life by Cleed Noble Note section. Now, Life is a Japanese stationery brand, and so is Cleed, I believe. And I, sorry, I don't remember how to pronounce Cleed. It might be Clyde. They did a collaboration because Life has been producing their Noble Note notebooks for a while, but they used cream paper. And I'm, well, while I'm okay with cream paper, I would prefer white paper. And so this collaboration caught my eye because it had white paper. And it's a very small, like very tiny, two millimeter grid with 100 sheets, which means 200 pages. So here it is. It is very smooth paper, and the grid is so tiny. What I intend to do is to write two squares per line. So two at two millimeters is four millimeters. And I find that four millimeters I can write. 3.7 millimeters, even though it's such a small difference, I cannot. Um, I have tried a pen test here in the back. It's fountain pen friendly, but it does ghost quite a bit. And 
Next we have another cross field. So this is the same cross field that I am using for my next journal, which I've shown already. It's just that this one is in its original packaging. It does come in a nice kind of cardboard sleeve to protect the paper. And I ordered both of these two journals at the same time to save on shipping. I know I like the quality and I know I like the paper, so that's why I was comfortable enough to get both of these. But when I will be using this, I'm not sure. Because I will probably be using this for my long form journal as well. Next we have, it's not really a notebook anymore. This is the Claire Fontaine notebook that I was talking about that I put in my morning pages journal. So I did tear it out. And this is just a remaining signature um, that I couldn't put inside the moleskin. Now, I, or I originally got this from a bookstore, but it had these paint kind of chipped off the cover, which is why I was able to get it at a discount. And I, I got it at a discount, so that's why I was willing to cut it up and put it into my moleskin. Because it is quite a, a large, awkward size anyway, compared to the A5, it's a lot wider, it's a lot taller. So I knew that I was going to have to cut it up anyway. This, this Claire Fontaine paper, by the way, I would purchase again. This is the first time I've purchased the notebook. I may not purchase this size, but I definitely like the paper very much. Next, we have another irregular size. This is by the company Ferris Wheel Press, and this is their Nothing Right notebook. You can see this one is a very awkward size. It's very square. It has a kind of faux leather cover. So it's nice and soft. It feels like faux leather. It's in a taupey gray color. It comes with bookmarks. And I like their kind of attention to detail when it comes with this notebook. You can see, look at this end paper. It's really beautiful. Same with the back. And it's got a bookmark. It's also got a dot grid. Now the dot grid is a 7mm dot grid, which is a little bit too big for me. And on the side here, they have this little illustration on every single page. And when you flip all of the pages, you get a moving image. So I got this through the Ferris Wheel Press Kickstarter campaign last year, and I have yet, I've yet to use it. I will probably be using this as a morning pages journal. Um, because of its irregular size, I don't quite know yet. Next up we have, this is not the Enigma notebook, although I have owned it in the past. This is just a sleeve, so it's just a cardboard protecting. And inside, I just store some thinner notebook. So here we have another Moleskine. So this is my last Moleskine, other than the James Bond one. And so it's another limited edition, which is where they suck me in. So it's a limited edition, Mar Super Mario. Very nice kind of blue cover. And I love the end paper. It's just stars. It's your typical Moleskine line journal with 6mm grit line spacing. And kind of the space at the top, space at the bottom. I don't know how I'm going to use this yet. I may use this for my morning pages. I've done it before with another Moleskine for my morning pages, but this paper is not exactly fountain pen friendly. And I realized I really want fountain friend, pen friendly um, notebooks. So I'm not sure yet. If I do, I may cut it out and put more different paper in here. And it kind of makes it a, a very expensive purchase because I'm just buying this for the cover and not for the paper. So I don't know if I would actually do that. Oh, and I like the red elastic as well with the contrast. Okay, next up we come to two identical notebooks or close to it. This is Moisture 1917 A5 dot grid journal. It's the same as my old morning pages journal. This one I got on sale. This one I was gifted. So that's why I have so many of them. I I do really like this notebook as i've said before i'd be happy to use it again i think it worked great with my fountain men's lease so i'll use this i won't probably use this at the same time like this is my long form and this is my morning pages i'll use them one at a time for either purpose it doesn't matter to me so. 
next we have another kind of broken up journal but this is from michael's it's their artist loft brand and it's another dot grid notebook now when i bought this i thought this would be an a5 but it seems to be a little bit smaller let's see yeah the regular a5 is a little bit taller and it's about the same width so again i also used this bought this not to use as a journal but to tear out the paper so I've torn out the entire notebook and this uh, book of marks is still hanging there. And I did use some of these little signatures of paper. It's a five millimeter dot grid. I use it to make some B6 size inserts. So again, I cut off the top and the bottom and I used it for the B6 size. I don't know. I don't really love this paper. I don't think it's that fountain pen friendly at all. I just noticed a lot of feathering. But um, if I were to use gel pens in here for, for, for my project, then... I have no problem with this paper. So then next we have another Enigma notebook sleeve. No more Enigma notebook already wrote, written in it. But again, it holds more smaller inserts. These are all three very similar inserts. They're from Lady Falcon Travelers. When you buy something from Lady Falcon Travelers, like a traveler's notebook, you get one of these matching little inserts. And they're made of this kind of yellowy paper. I don't know what kind of paper. I imagine it's good for art and it's good for watercolor. And it's blank as well. So there's the brand name. It's a sample insert. So again, I don't know what I'm going to use this for because I'm not really an artistic person and I don't draw or paint that much. Um, I would say maybe I could use some samples in here or I can, or I can try to write, but... I prefer lined paper, and this blank paint is a little bit strange to me. I don't know what to do with it. And it so happens that I have three of them. So the last little tiny insert in here is from Chuyu Culture. And it says that the name of this notebook is kind of Creer Notebook. Creer? It is Tomoe Ru paper. It's got a craft cover. It's cream colored Tomoe Ruru paper and it's the 68 GSM quality. I thought I'd try this because I haven't tried the cream Tomoe River paper before. And this one is the thicker version as well. So I knew I'd like the paper. I just didn't know if I'd like the color. And I've yet to use it. I think it's got 64 pages or so. And I probably will use it for my morning pages journal. I would hesitate to use this for my long form journal because there's not enough pages. Next we have a Kiki K notebook. The Kiki K is another stationary company. This is notebook. It's kind of a very hot neon coral, which is not my color. So. <laughs> I don't really feel like picking this up. It's also a lined notebook. And it's got a space at the top for the subject and the date. And every single page has their logo on it for Kiki K. I do like the end paper though, the simple gray and white polka dots. So if I were to use this, I'm going to be using this as my morning pages journal. I did do a pen test, like a fountain pen test, and it was fine. I uh, haven't really extensively tested it so I can't say for sure but I, I think that this was doable. I don't love this thing at the top but I can live with it for my morning pages if I wanted to do so. All right we're coming up to the end. This is my Chuyu Culture. It is an A5 size as well. It is not actually a notebook or a journal. It is a planner. A one day one page planner and I have the B6 version of this which I'm using currently. So I've got this. The reason why I got it is because of the paper. Tomoe, Tomoe River paper again. 68 GSM, which is the thicker version of the paper. And even though it's a dated planner with one day, one page, there's a lot of real estate here to write. And I, I picked this up. I knew I liked the paper since I'd used it before. I used, and I know I can use this for my regular journal. So I'm excited to use that. And I just ignore everything here. I know that I can ignore those. It's a really good price. Um, I did buy two of these and then I had the other one cut down. At, and I showed that in a video. So I, again, I bought two of them at the same time just to save on shipping. The 
then lastly we have it's not really the last one but this is the box that came with my Moleskine um, 007 James Bond notebook because it's special edition it comes in a box and all that's inside is the Moleskine paper that I had cut out of that first notebook so here it is all in one big chunk still don't know what I'm going to do with it uh, but it's still here don't want to throw it away I have two more notebooks to show you. I forgot to show it earlier because I stored this in a different place. These are both notebooks that I've already started using as journals, but then I stopped halfway through. The first one on this stack is, it's a Midori MD notebook. It's, um, they're A5 size and it's got the dot grid, which is something new that they released last year. And it's the, it's, five millimeter dot grid with 176 pages here it's the dot grid is interesting in that it's a blue color as opposed to gray i like this paper for sure i did split it into two because i was using this for the month of december 2019 and then when i got to the end of the 2019 i thought i wanted to start over in a new journal for 2020 and that's why I cut it. This back half of the journal is still pretty usable and I will probably return to it as a journal at some point. This paper is very fountain pen friendly but it does not work with my favorite fountain pen and so I feel less likely to go into here if my favorite fountain pen doesn't work in here. What happens when I say it doesn't work in here is I will start writing and it will look like it's working fine but then Eventually, it's almost like the paper, or it's, it's like the pen runs out of ink and it stops flowing. And I, I can't explain why, because it works on the other papers. Eventually, one day, I'm going to put in a new cover on this uh, first part of the journal and the second half of the journal as well. Lastly, we have this Muji notebook, also a five size. And it's their uh, spiral bound dot grid notebook. Again, it's also 500, it's also five millimeter dot grid. And this one is a gray dot grid. Now this, this paper I like more than the Midori actually. It is also very fountain pen friendly. Um, I'd have no complaints with this notebook except that I generally like bound notebooks as opposed to spiral bound notebooks. I really like this paper. It is slightly uh, yellower paper as with the M MD paper and I generally prefer white paper but for both of these I was able to write just fine with this color paper. Definitely, I would buy this again. It's uh, definitely cheaper than the Midori MD notebook and I don't know if I would buy the Midori MD notebook again. Just I hope you enjoyed watching me going through all of my notebooks. I know that I have a lot and I definitely will not be able to use it up by the end of the year. You can see that I only used up two notebooks and I'm almost halfway through the year. So it's going to take me a while. It's a good way for me to see that I have a lot. I don't need to buy any more. If you have any questions about them, let me know. I'll try to answer you and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.